There was recent research at Emory University that came out in January of 2014 that was mind-boggling. It was research by a Dr. Diaz and a Dr. Ressler. And it was so simple, that's why I know it's true. Because if it's complicated, forget about it. Anyone could understand it. <clears throat> could understand it. This is what they did. They took a sweet smelling substance and they passed it through the cages of mice. The mice loved it. They thought it was great. Okay. So then what they started doing is passing the smell and then they shocked them. Over time, through condition response, these mice just shivered just with smelling this substance, never being shocked. Understandable condition response. But the next generation also shook. And the next two generations after that shook as soon as they smelled that substance without being shocked. How did that happen? In my brain, I think this is so logical. But they did something else. They took shocked males sperm with unshocked female eggs. They then placed it in in vitro fertilization. They took that conceptus and they inserted it into a, a surrogate mouse mother who had no relationship to any of this. And believe it or not, the progeny, the next three generations that were born, shook when they smelled that. They did the same thing with a shocked egg and an unshocked sperm, in vitro fertilization, surrogate mother, and they, these litters, three generations thereafter, shook. And that is so amazing to me. So this is what they figured out is really simple, that pain, that pain glommed on to smell. So whenever the future generations smell this, they shook, and that gene for smell was on an X chromosome. Now it's also beautiful, and they haven't done it with other sensory systems, but I would bet anything, pain, any noxious stimuli that someone experiences in life is carried to the next generation through one of the sensory systems. I believe this in my heart. So what does this mean? Okay. It simply means that my brain genetically is like my ancestors. So let's say I was a mouse, which maybe I am, and I smelled this for the first time, this stimuli that was once sweet. I'm experiencing from my ancestry that I have to stay away from this. Think how brilliant evolution is, life is. Life prepares each generation for the next, what might happen but we have a mind, and I want to speak about the mind. Mice were conditioned. In the experiment, they were conditioned to fear pain. Okay, condition response. We too learn from condition response, but there is something else. We have a mind. And that mind makes, it, makes us think it's us personally. We take everything personally. I don't, that's the ego, that's the I. I don't think mice take it personally. They just smell something and they'll avoid it because there's something that tells them that's not right. They're in the present. I might, at this point, I'm questioning whether mice are more conscious than we are. Because so much of what we do in life is based on the past. The mice 
just experience. Their body tells them avoid. Our body or our mind tells us why am I avoiding? What is it about that person or that food I don't like? And then someone tells you, you should like it. So after a while, you're eating food that your body told you not to eat or whatever. Our mind takes us into a state of unconsciousness. And I think we have to learn to be conscious. And to be conscious is to be in the moment without judgment, without comparison, or trying to understand why we're doing what we're doing. That's consciousness.